WM Podcast. Hello, I am Matty Diller and welcome to Best of the Rest, your Friday roundup of the odds and ends in your wrestling week. And this is most definitely odds and ends, no question. TWM Podcast, that is what you are listening to. Um, we bring you wrestling content six days a week, available in all usual places. Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Acast, Podbean, YouTube, tune in wherever else you get your pods. I mean, thank you very, very much for downloading them. Matty Della here, joined by my friend and your Joseph Kingsley. Hello. Joseph Kingsley, you know, if you're going to um, go full name, so not full name, but let, no one bothers with that. Well, but this, we're not going. We're not going full full name. We're going na- name and n- people. Yeah, na- name on CV, not name on birth certificate. Um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one because. We're in a unique position where both NXT UK and Impact were just post-game shows for their respective pay-per-views because, of course, last weekend we had TakeOver Blackpool 2 and then we had Hard to Kill. So um, It's it's a nice little follow-up from Monday, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's pretty much... This this is the epilogue, if you will, for that. Um, I feel like like I've spent the entire week with you, Matthew. Yeah. um, So we thought, why not regale you with stories from Wednesday you would have seen all over social media as well that we um, went to the BT Sport housewarming party Um, so we thought one why not get in there with BT Sport and give them another plug um, by talking about the party and two there's a bunch of funny stories from that night so we'll um, have a little discussion about that but before we get into that we should have a little shifty through some of the big goings on from NXT UK and Impact now we can't really recap both shows because there's literally not enough to really recap if we're brutally honest so I thought we'd just go through some of the big stories from both of them and we're going to start off with Impact because they managed to get themselves kicked off Twitch yes they did Um, in dramatic fashion as well not going to lie so in case you didn't see this um if you go on the i don't know whether they've been um kind of gone back got back up online as of time of recording um but they aired impact live as they do on twitch um alongside the airing on access tv and there was a segment with rob van damme that was actually i will say quite an amusing segment because i'm not because we said it before rvd's new character in impact is actually really it's made RVD interesting again, and this is coming from someone who's a massive Rob Van Dam fan. Um, I will say that they are still blocked from Twitch. Sorry, unless you've got a time machine, that content is unavailable. Ah, so they are still blocked. And they did a um, a, a video of Van Dam basically putting himself over, um, and then Katie Forbes in a well, in a barely in a bikini. Um, starts moaning that he's talking about wrestling a lot and then his girlfriend's girlfriend Jennifer turns up and he just the, uh, what I love is they obviously do the hard cuts with the um, steak and every time he cuts back he's just more and more slightly disheveled covered in makeup covered in and then what I love is uh, my favourite bit is him cutting the promo while he's just got kisses and whipped cream all over his face um, and then they talk about they get some bad puns where he goes, let's Rob Van Dam take off that robe, Van Dam, And then the one goes, let's see that Rob Van D-, And they cut away. <laughs> I, it, it's incredibly well done, but at the same time, you can see why it was, why it got them in trouble, Joe. Um, once upon a time, we had a, str- a Twitch channel. Once upon a time, um, a friend that will remain unnamed um, was happy to go onto said Twitch channel. Didn't take the, the, the clothing was was taken off, but she like she she used to pick provocative tops. These oh, days that would get you banned off Twitch. I, I was gonna say I was like, we still have a Twitch channel. I'm thinking, ah, previous life. Yeah. Yes, got you mean. Yes, yeah. Yes. We still do have a Twitch channel, but we don't do video that much video content on it. Once upon a time, I had a Twitch. Cha- I was involved in the Twitch channel, which had a fair amount of video content from it. That was a story from then. Um, yeah, that would get you off, um, off Twitch. This, 
was borderline softcore pornography without the pappy ending, so to speak. I, mean, I I'm here for Rob Van Dam being uh, pro wrestling's answer to Hugh Hefner, but less problematic. There's some things about Hugh Hefner that went around. Um, I like because I like because like, Don Callis came out and said like we have the scope to go up to just like to skew a bit more adult. And they do because you have like the drug references, you have um, more, more more violence references. But the key thing is, I've noticed the impact. They're doing these things, and they are risque. They are o- over the top, but they're not grotesque. Even like like I struggle. Like when I watched Hard to Kill, I watched it on my phone. I had to like cover my phone with the Katie Forbes entrance because it is a bit much. But it's not like it's not safe for work but it's not like it's not ECW levels they're they're doing it quite well yeah but they are definitely tiptoeing on the line yeah like they're they're they're, they're a trapeze artist right now I can't wait to see how they fall off oh maybe they have with this Twitch thing yeah it's one of those things is like they've got to be careful because they are skewing towards more adult Content and yeah, if, the, if, the, if the audience is there, it seems like the audience is there for it. But it is they are sort of got a beta many masters. One of them being Twitch, and it's gonna hopefully we'll hear that they've kind of sorted out um, any issues with with Twitch in the future. But yeah, it just seems to. The thing is, it wasn't exactly like it's one of those things. It's one of those things of like people getting upset about that and getting them banned off Twitch. When literally, if you look at stuff like Always Sunny in Philadelphia, is on probably around the same time as that. Um, thing. and Archer thing. as well and they're saying worse things and worse things are happening on them no this is the thing um, they're off Twitch because they of uh, that segment specifically went against Twitch's terms of service yeah I'm just talking about in general but the, uh, the Twitch stream's funny because that um, it just yeah if you, they're going to use that as heat and it's going to be great imagine if they did a ninja and announced that they're moving to Mixer instead <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just imagining um, Rob Van Dam's next promo going. Yep, Rob Van Dam, I'm here. Um, all of wrestling is a homage to me because you know I vented half the moves these kids are doing these days. That's right. And here's my girlfriend and my girlfriend's girlfriend, and together we are all too hot for Twitch. Yeah, they need they'll they'll, they'll play on that. It's great pub. It's great publicity, but at the same time, I imagine they're annoyed that they've lost that revenue stream at the moment. They'll, they'll be back. Yeah. But it's, it's yeah, it just it was entertaining. Like it's not going to be for everyone. But then again, not every wrestling show, not every medium is meant to suit every palate. Like some things are going to be unpalatable for for some people, and some people are going to enjoy it. And it's funny. It also makes me laugh that it's that 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 is a shoot. It's this is a legit thing that Rob Van Dam does in his life. He has his long term girlfriend or wife. I don't know if they got married. They might be married. I can't remember. And then they and that girl is legitimately their respective girlfriend they're in a throttle okay. IRL which is a, amazing and fair play to Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes look, look as, as long as everyone is, everyone is happy and as well no one's been exploited my favourite line from that promo was um, the girls asking what's ECW and, and Rob Van Dam going they weren't even born when that was, that was on winning and I'm like oh my god that was brilliant that, that was full on that was full on midlife crisis wasn't it like it was yeah, well, it was really funny is, yeah it it's amazing yeah. that two of the most over I people in wrestling are currently going for their midlife crisis so. in the word sorry what? <laughs> no not that never that um, yeah so you've got, you got the two midlife crisis guys running wrestling in Van Damme and Jericho you'd, you'd love to see it um NXT UK uh, it was mainly more you had some good matches you had Mastiff uh, against Ono which was pretty good um, and you had A-Kid against Connors I think those are the two matches that they announced yes, that is the two matches they announced I watched them both um, Joseph Connors versus A-Kid well A-Kid is an absolute star to carry that guy through I'm yeah just, just, just don't like Joseph Connors do we no this is just I think um Nathan said that um, Joseph Connor got, got a standing ovation. From what I could see, people stood up and booed. <laughs> he got a standing boovation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, also, top tip for anyone doing a podcast: don't stroke your cat while you're doing a podcast because they will think you're playing and start biting and scratching your hand. Fuck 
that hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, so and then you had Mastiff against Ono, which was pretty good. I in, I I enjoyed that. Again, it's Ono putting over Mastiff because we said Mastiff is a program. He got one for a week. Maybe they'll continue this feud. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but they did announce two matches. Um, I think Mastiff's next program has to be Volta, surely. I hope that would be nice. I'd love them to do a, a Volta um, Mastiff feud for the belt. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, hasn't he won? A, like, the only feud he hasn't won is Joe Coffey, and Joe Coffey's back of the line. So. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. Well made. Um, they announced two matches for next week. Uh, I think they're filming in York this weekend yeah. I think so yeah tonight tonight I believe oh is it tonight and Saturday I think it might be tonight and Saturday they're filming in hold York. on oh no technically we should just text day he'll not I don't know if he's going but he'll yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not going yeah um but they announced two matches uh for the Cruiserweight Fatal 4-Way putting four of NXT's finest NXT's and air quotes for one of them because you got um, Jordan Devlin against Legero, which will be really really good and then um, Travis Banks against NXT OG the Brian Kendrick uh, the best British wrestler that ever was Cassius Ono is fuming right now yeah um, it's just it's so weird they have so many, so many people they, they could have put Gallagher in there they could have put uh, Akid could have been in there they could have put literally dozens of people and they just whacked in the Brian Kendrick because remember, why would why would it not be bait or bait yeah it was Pete Don not any oh no. Oh, oh no it's not bait sorry yeah. um, um <laughs> I'm about to say I'll let's see what he did bait is fighting DIY. yeah um, can't be bait bait is fighting DIY at Worlds Collide so this is true I guess I guess all I have to say is considering the uh, relative size of BritRest and considering NXT UK has signed two thirds of BritRest build better people yeah do, build do, better in general <laughs> do better is is the long and short of this um I can't really think of anything else like no, the, the um, was it a, the open on impact was a was it a six well, no it was a tag match wasn't it it was Shira and it was, it was, it was yeah it was Lucha Rules it was the Desi Hit Squad versus the Rascals versus Reno Scum versus the makeshift tag team of Daka 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 that and um, the TJP yeah okay thank you for cutting me off <laughs> I was going to know that the, 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 I think he did say on I think there was an interview recently we used to say that TJP looked a bit of a wrong and um, and there were rumours that TJP that might have been true however he's come out he's come out online that I think a bunch of people that didn't like him were just defaming defaming him online um, yeah that's what I was going to say he's most definitely not on the yeah he's de- like yeah. confirmed um, <laughs> you you had to get that word in didn't you you could not help yourself word definitely yeah that's that's the one you love adverbs why not spread I said why not spread the gospel of the TWM squad with some of our lovely merch over at Teespring we have t-shirts for all shapes and sizes hoodies sweatshirts mugs stickers and loads more also just for listening to this podcast you can get 10% off your order I said using I said use I said using the code podcast that's podcast once again podcast in the checkout for 10% off at teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash TWM dash wrestling dash merch that's right praise testify we need extra content because there wasn't enough for NXT UK and Impact so we're going to talk about us going to um, BT Sports housewarming party before it start big thank you to BT Sport the um, the new home for WWE in the UK for inviting us uh, um, like we behaved ourselves I really behaved myself. Yeah, um, you. It was. We'll get, it, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. Yeah. Um, so it was the BT Sports Studios in Stratford. Um, it started off well. We got lost. Um, yeah. You're not even comfortable with your own end. Right. Right. Are, you, are we starting this now? 
We are, we're starting this now. Do not trigger me with this bollocks. Right. Because I got this. We were trying to find the bus. I never get the bus from Stratford because I'm going to say this now. Stratford is emphatically not my end. I am from Essex, not from Stratford. Stratford is not Essex. It is Greater London. My end and basically... Romford to about Barking. That's where I know I know my area. That's where I know my buses and trains. I don't know how to get a bus from Stratford. If at most, if I'm outside that station, I'm either going to subway or I'm getting an Uber because I'm too drunk to get on the train. So they were like, "Where's this bus stop, there, Matt? Where's the bus stop? I don't know where the bus stop is." And Joe was like, "I'm lost. I'm on the wrong side of Westfield." I'm like, "Come to the other end." We met there. We got there. In the end, we found out that the bus we wanted was literally exactly where Joe was an hour ago. Because Joe turned up an hour early because he wanted to prove a point. Um, no, no, it's not that. Um, you say you say it's because of work. It's you wanted to prove a point. No, so. I had planned to do in the time when I left work early. Just fell through, so I had nothing to do. So I went to Stratford. You literally could have gone straight home, got changed, and then come back out again, like I did. Or, well, I showered at work, and I planned for the stuff, so I showered at work. Still. Oh, I did. Well, let's not do this on pod. Uh, <laughs> um, then we get to um, the BT Sports Studios, and the actual event thing was um, like actually in the actual big studio where they do like all the Premier League stuff and the UFC stuff and all that. Um, and it was mad. It was in like generally like one of, we've been to a few PR events with previous companies, and it'll be like a bar somewhere. There are a few bits there. People are trying like, oh, look at this, look at that, look at this. Um, they're trying to like put themselves over. Da da da. As a, as a, as a, there's a, like a free bar for like an hour. Job done. This is the first proper full blown big company PR event we've been to, and my God, did WWE and BT show out. Um, even from the beginning, Joe, when we, when we walked up to BT Sports Studios, what was outside? Um, it was a bunch of ladders and chairs, and it was a hearse with Undertaker's logo all over it that you could literally get in. Yeah, and um, that's where we got a hilarious video of um, Joe reenacting Backlash '99, uh, which was which was great. But then it was so. I'm going to caveat this now. This is not racial behaviour. I'm just saying this now. It was so dark that we had, we I had to really like try and struggle to. You could. It was a black car in the dark, and we couldn't see Joe. But I managed to get it to work in the end. We should have put flash on in hindsight, but we wanted to get all the logos about reflected. But I digress. Um, we then went in, um, and there was just literally everything everywhere. It was. What was your favourite bit of like bric a brac that was that was around the entire studio? Probably the Hulkamania shirt on the way in. <laughs> I did like that photo. You're like, I need a photo of this now, and it was just you looking disappointed, staring at a Hulkamania shirt. <laughs> no, the, 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 the beauty of that photo, of photo is you can't see my face. Yeah, it was just highly amusing. Um, I liked the you just had like random belts just knocking about all yeah. over the shop. Um, we were yeah, the only ones um, who didn't put belts on because we're not fucking mugs. Are you joking? Um, have you? Ch- um... Oh no! Wait, okay. Dan did it. Dan, because people went. By the way, for context, um, me, Joe, and Big Boss Dan, the Big Boss Dan, when um, went to this event because it was well, the Big Boss Dan and me, and for me, it was literally twenty minutes from my house. So of course, I was going to call dibs. Oh, tw- twenty minutes from your house. Yeah, it doesn't mean I know where it is. Cause this is uh, yeah, so, so. Rom- Romford's 10 minutes from my house, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, um, nah, I'm sorry. Not my ends. Not my ends. It's, your- <laughs> it's not my ends. Mm. I didn't grow up in Stratford. You know? So, um, I didn't grow up in and around oh, Stratford. Uh, right, near a shopping centre to me, it was the exchange in Romford. It was not Stratford. I never went to Stratford. If you went out on a whim, you went to Lakeside, which is even further out, or you went to the exchange in Romford. You never went to Stratford. Stratford's only yeah. become a thing in the last, like... 10 years okay. Okay. Oh, all right all right all right I can it was see. not your, a your, thing your, your your back is up your back is up it is my my back is up because i'm getting triggered okay. with your need to saying that it's my end or it's not my end that's so like me turning around to you and saying camden's your end because it's 20 minutes from your house can is you shut up um <laughs> don't worry you got your penance on wednesday because when you walked in there mr dry january over here and realized it was a free bar <laughs> uh, well yeah okay fine we can talk about that as well um i still hate myself to this day yeah genuinely 
I, I did feel bad because I felt like we were taking a vegan to a fucking meat festival. <laughs> Having you there oh, on dry January. And, and you vegan to a meat festival. Yeah, just, no, but it was just, oh, you were like, oh, we were like, just have a beer. You're, you're fine. Like, we're not going to judge you. But the second, I, the, fe- the second I said that, I knew deep down in my heart of hearts, in the subcockle region of my of my heart, I knew the second we said just have a beer, we won't like it, no one's gonna make a big deal out of it. You then suddenly went, well now I'm doing this to prove a fucking point. <laughs> so, um, so you were on the um, the sprites because they had they had no orange juice. It was either it was I either like, I don't, straight I don't like liquor, fizzy drinks, or straight liquor or fizzy drinks. And I'm not the biggest fan of either. And Sprite is the fruitiest pause thing they had uh well no a margarita was but fuck yeah my life um but yeah so me and dan so made our way amazing. through several beers um went i'm around. very upset you didn't move on to the hard stuff no i, I was after a while i was getting tired i'd have like a, a coke to get my, get the caffeine rushing um and then yeah, they also had WW2K20, so I got to play that for the first time, even though I go for Christmas. It's just still sitting in the cellophane on my desk. Pr- I am proud that um, I won that because I don't play 2K games. Yeah, like, oh, for, well, for one, and this is not an excuse, I'm just saying it, it was on the Xbox, so I kind of vaguely knew the, 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 the combinations, but then again, you don't play it, so it doesn't really matter either way. We played Xavier Woods versus X Pac in a Falls County World match because reasons, and. Joe just went full. You like basically Joe channeled backstage Sin Cara and proceeded to just constantly punch and kick me. Uh, I just all I knew how to do. Yeah, and I was like trying to do like flying moves and 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 stop him, but he just kept countering everything I was doing. I just kept punching me in the face and then pinned. You know, so I- as soon as I worked out what the button was to counter, I had it in the back. Yeah, because that's my biggest weakness in WWE games is not knowing how to counter stuff. I'm I'm good at set. If I can just get a, like a ten hit combo on, I'm I'm golden. But if, so, if someone if someone figures out how to counter moves, I am fucking finished. Um, so then, oh, there actually was also a massive ring, a wrestling ring there, or a massive wrestling ring, just a wrestling ring um, there. But then we get to first story of the night. Uh, which is Stephanie McMahon powering off Dan. <laughs> Be fair, Dan can spin this in a really positive way. Um, Stephanie McMahon just compared Dan to um, Triple H's mum. Yeah, but I feel like she meant it in 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 a in a mocking sense. I'm going to tell the story. So, of course. well, yeah, go for it. We for, for the straight first thing we do after we spot the spot the um, the, the ring and start taking photos and stuff. We did loads of social media stuff. Thank you for everyone that liked and retweeted everything we did. Um, we really appreciate that. Um, we spotted Stephanie chatting to uh, to different people, and then we noticed there were some people getting photos. And me and Dan were like, "Did we get a photo?" We were like, when are we ever in any form of lifetime going? to get the opportunity to get a selfie with, with Stephanie McMahon um, and we're like right we've got to line up so we line up uh, like we're like two people from, from, from getting a photo we are the next group of people and Stephanie just goes hold on a minute I've got to do an interview with BT Sport I'll be right back Joe over here uh, rightfully so um, takes the negative approach of she's not coming back like she's going to get called away and they're going to say really sorry she can't do any more things she's got to get ready for the rest of the show blah 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 um literally the exact opposite happened she gets the bt sport interview done she comes over and goes i'm going to come over the other because she was doing photos over a guardrail like just doing the normal like fan photo thing she's like i'm just gonna walk around to meet you guys so me and dan and joe turn around gone oh shit like we're not just going to like meet stephanie we're going to like shake her hand and like and 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 and, and like Put, put arm around and, and uh, have an actual meeting with like one of the biggest executives in WWE basically pretty much the like the second in well they're pretty much the second in command to Vince in regards of like the McMahon hierarchy in WWE so King order mm-hmm. yeah um as she comes around uh, Dan gets his photo um, demands another one because he doesn't like it d- didn't like it because he's a fucking such a pont with, his, with, his, with selfies it's ridiculous um, and then he takes one inside <laughs> um, he, then I get a photo with Stephanie and Dan takes one on, on his phone because he's got a better camera than me and Joe so um, 
He takes a photo and it's taken ages. Like, like not too long, but long enough that you'd make a comment. And Stephanie McMahon just leans into me and just goes, he takes photos. Like, he acts like my mother-in-law. <laughs> just, Danny's just standing there jittering with a phone, not knowing what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I just start laughing and then I'm like thank you for the event and I'm like Dan she just mugged you off massively there and he's like don't don't, don't care don't care what she said I spoke to Stephanie McMahon not bothered um, do you want to do you want another layer to this um <laughs> do you do you know this about um well you don't know you don't know her that well my sister idolizes Stephanie McMahon and you refuse to get a photo with her Oh, I know, but um, my sister idolizes Stephanie McMahon, and so I what I did for my sister was I recorded an entrance because my sister loves the theme. Yeah, she's the only one. Yeah, so I. So. Yeah, I don't. Well, no, no, no. There's another fan. You're talking to another fan, Matthew. Really? Um, really? You like that? Of the, of, of, of the theme. The theme is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> no, there's a different thing. There's finding it good, and then there's finding it funny. Oh uh, well. Um, so I sent the picture to my sister. She was like, oh my God, Stephanie, I can't believe you're that close to her. And I was like, I turned down a picture with her, lol. Um, and then sent out a picture with that. And she went, oh my God, they look good together. <laughs> Somewhere Paul Levesque is shook. <laughs> Just brilliant. Um, and then they we get called to the ring and they do this big, um, like, basically a big sales pitch for BT, BT Sport. It, it was nice. You had Radley from NXT UK and Rugby Union player, Hugo Bonnier? I want to say it, Rugby yeah, Union. Yes, yes, Harlequins. Um, and then they bring out um, five, was it five? Yeah. No, f- yeah. Four. Four, four legends. Woo! Yeah. First of all, we get Flair. Um, and me and Joe are very excited because it sounds like they're going to give um, Flair a live microphone um, but then first of all it does seem like they just he just goes respectful that's all he, they ask him about the UK fans he goes respectful and we're like oh they, they, they've specifically told Flair to say one word and one word only um, so hard motherfucker no they probably told what they told Flair was you don't get a drink till the uh, media stuff is done uh it's just one of those but he wasn't really around for long so unless he, he must have gone back to the hotel with, with things like that I started uh, drinking <laughs> he's no to be fair like I don't want to cast aspersions on the man um, but like he's, he's getting on now I imagine at that point he must have just been like I've got to fly back I'm 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 go- I'm gonna go have a a, a quiet yeah. one. One would imagine. So you had uh, Rick Flair, you had Kurt Angle, you had Paige, who was loving like like Paige is genuinely yeah. like you know the we, we, like we always say we have the well, list well, of, well, of people you, of like wrestlers you'd gladly like go and meet at the pub. I think yeah. Paige is definitely one of them because she is fucking hilarious. Yeah. So, so yeah she was on there talking about stuff and just going like I'm trying really hard not to curse don't worry we spoke to her for literally a, I spoke to her for a minute and we got her to swear <laughs> which was brilliant um, and then they bring out the fourth legend and hall of famer Kane Velasquez uh <laughs> the highlight of which was when they were like he's a former UFC champion someone behind us got very very excited thinking it was um thinking it was Brock Oh my God. which is really funny I'm like oh you've clearly not read the press release have you um, yeah so they came out and they and they cut promos and then like most places it'll be like oh they'll be um, like like for the for the for the assorted press and we were down like we were down as, as guests we didn't want really down as necessarily press and they were like no we're just gonna send them out into the crowd into the throng of people with um to to, to like get photos and interview people so we're standing there I think Dan's gone to the toilet at this point and we get to story two um, the look on Joe's face when he realises Ric Flair is within his within behind me yeah this was brilliant um, do you want to tell I, your vision your your version of events first or shall I tell you me seeing and me telling you that he was behind you first it's like, I don't remember like <laughs> did you black out <laughs> Which explains the look on my face for the fo- one photo that's available for everyone. Yeah, um, it will be on the podcast post. The photo of you and Flair, to be honest, because it's just, it's gold. Um, so they all walk out one by one. They 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 walk around the guard round and come into the the, the the public area bit. And I turn to Joe and just go, Joe, you're three feet away from Ric Flair. 
I don't know. Like, it's the first time I've ever seen the color drain from your face. <laughs> that, which is an impressive feat, if you think. Yeah, it was. It was impressive. Um, and you were just like, generally, if you would have, you would have probably screamed. <laughs> but you realize how close you were to Ric Flair. Uh, so when I told you that, what was like, so describe your reaction when I was like, Ric Flair's literally behind you, Joe. Um... I think that was it, really. Everything just kind of... It kind of everything went slow motion, didn't it? Uh, a little bit. Um, and there were, there were lots of people in front of me, and I was like, well, maybe it's probably going to go, but let me try and get a photo. And, well, the rest is history. Yeah, you got a photo um, with Flair, and it's a brilliant photo. We all got photos of Flair, which was all... He was genuinely so just... Recept- like... I can imagine, like, it, it's Rick fucking Flair. He does not need to be that receptive and kind to a bunch of British, like, Marks. journalist n- marks. There were some journal- journos there, but, like, yeah, a bunch of, like, guys were like, oh, my God, it's Flair. But he was so nice to everyone. He shook everyone's hand. He took a photo of everyone. Like, when are we ever, when are you ever going to get a photo of Rick Flair? Am I right? Like, it's, you You were going to do it. Um, uh, I, I wish I had, if, Funnily enough, a drink would have helped. If I'd had a drink, it probably would have helped me in that situation. That would have been. You met your hero. Not that's best. <laughs> yeah. You met your hero. Yeah, so that, that, that's pretty cool. I met. I, I. I met my problematic fave. It's just yeah. Um, then we get to um, story three. So Dan returns, and my aim. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, I know what you're going to bring up. Are you going to bring up the beer story first? Um, yeah, I was actually. Um, wait, this. Th- oh, yeah, no, but that comes a bit later. What I was going to bring up was you want to know how much of a punch Dan is with photos? He's the reason I don't have a photo of Paige. You asked for another one instead of me. <laughs> <laughs> He's such an ass. You should have told me I would take one with you. We went back two minutes. Oh, anyway, get to the point. Story three my interaction with Paige because my um goal the entire thing is I wanted to get a um do a little like chat with Paige because. I love Paige. Paige is a pioneer for women's wrestling. I love women's wrestling. Paige. I wanted to get a um, like talk to her about her mom, talk to her about British wrestling and stuff. Um, but then everyone was swarming around, um, and she was loving like she was loving life. You could tell she was just really happy to be in the UK and happy to be around everyone. Because um, sometimes you know you like 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 you can tell when someone's putting it on. Like when they're when they're pretending, but generally Paige was just loving it. She was like chatting to everyone, being really nice to everyone. Um, we all, we all go get photos. I get a photo with her, and I'm just like, um, I told her like that I did commentary on one of her old matches in WW. She's like, oh wow, it's amazing. And I went, oh, and I watched your mum in Eve on Sunday, like she, um, in the Rumble, and she's been so careful minding her P's and Q's with her minder behind her and she's like oh no yeah no I got to send a video and she got such a fucking big pop oh no I cursed <laughs> I was like yes <laughs> get in uh, um, amazing so we me and Dan get photos of Paige unfortunately Joe didn't which is a real shame um, but then like a minute later I got, I got a photo of Kurt Angle you guys didn't oh do you get one with Kurt because Kurt was the other end wasn't he and we met I, I, I I've got a story about Kurt Angle, but finish this one. Okay, I'll tell you the page. If you've got a story about Kurt, that's really good. So a minute later, we go, I, we, um, go I'm going back because it's thinned out. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go see if I can get it. I'm like, hi. She's like, oh, you're back again. <laughs> you're back again. Uh, and and I'm like, can we do a little video just talking about NXT UK for like a, like a minute? And she's, and I was, I was expecting to say, I haven't got the time. But she's gone, yeah, sure, cool. I'm like, Dan, good. We, we filmed the video. Um, and then she goes, are you wearing jupe? And I've just gone, yes. And then she goes, well, you smell like my boyfriend. And I'm just like, did not expect that response. I did not expect to one, be sniffed by Paige in a non-creepy way. Um, and... And then also be like, yes, you smell like my ex-boyfriend. Because I got, I got so much shit from my friends saying that I smell like a 14-year-old boy because I was wearing jupe when I went out with them. Now I'm yeah. saying that Paige, is, Paige said it was fine. Y'all can go fuck yourself. I got it for Christmas last year, and I'm happy, and I'm still wearing it to this day. So there we go. got the seal of approval from a highly fashionable person in Paige. So y'all can bite me. 
Um, anyway, we got the we got the little chat with Paige, and it's doing amazingly well online. I think about fifteen, between like thirteen and fifteen thousand views on on Twitter, which is awesome, and got retweeted by Viper and stuff, which is really really cool. Um, anyway, we now jump cut to Joe with Kurt Angle. Oh, like Kurt was nice. Shook his hand, took a photo nice and simple my story didn't even happen to me i have no idea what the person in front of me said to kurt ankle because he had a little bit more time because the bouncer was um kurt's mind was making sure that no one was standing behind him so that no one was photobombing the pictures with him but the person in front of me said something and kurt like and all i hear is kurt going don't worry about it don't sweat it you're you and you're strong and you got to this point and like literally and i was like oh my god he's literally just he he lives his gimmick yeah he's he an all-american hero <laughs> he was what doing is this <laughs> you I have they, a never be your, they, they say never be your heroes but what the heck is this <laughs> i have a feeling i don't know who it is but there were a bunch of guys from we, we spoke to um one of them from hustle the training school uh, so i wouldn't be shocked oh, if it was yeah. one of, i wouldn't be shocked if it was one of those guys that was like saying like oh you know it well, might have been you know it might have been though shout out to the hustle though but um it was, I think it was Koss was his name was one of the guys from yeah, 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 Hustle yeah. absolute G yeah yeah what, what a nice guy lovely guy um, what, what a nice guy Kurt Angle was oh yeah Kurt Angle lovely <laughs> we met Rick we met Paige we met Kurt we didn't bother we came to last guess his dad's a coward yeah we wanted dad to go off from out for a fight because he's already fought um, he's, he, he's fought and beaten Anderson already- Silver so 100 percent like it's a true story you know, he, go go through go through his instagram there's photos of him doing mma with anderson silver it's brilliant it's really really it's really like you know and if he gets three wins if he gets three unsanctioned wins um against former ufc stars then he gets a title shot yeah in, in saudi arabia <laughs> he'll replace him in the rumble It'll be brilliant um so there was some like nice ma- they some they put some matches on like um we saw sheamus against andrade which was fun we saw nikki against charlotte because it was so weird because we literally realised that that was probably the smallest crowd that Charlotte's ever wrestled in front of possibly I think she was an F- F- FCW but I could be wrong I can't I'm not I may be but that was yeah and it was weird because it was a very they wrestled very holiday camp style matches and it was done very yeah. very like casually so it was quite funny um like well, Andrade wasn't casual. Oh, yeah. Bumps, he was taking work. Oh yeah, he was going. He was going full like messy bump. But Charlotte was probably like pointing people out in the crowd. <laughs> but this is for you, sweetheart, doing moves and shit. Um, oh, 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 the woman next to me. Oh, who loved Charlotte Flair? <laughs> it was great. astounding. She was incredible. Absolute hero. I wish we got her name because she was a legend in the front row. And then we got um, Gallus against. Uh, uh, hashtag horny for Gallus. Hashtag horny for Gallus. Um, we we did send a message. We did send a f- um, video to today, and he showed us his um, his hat um, against uh, Mustache Mountain and Ilya Dragunov. Um, Russian strong style, as they dubbed it. Yeah, Russian strong style. Uh, and this was great because we just kept like there were there were a few small. You could tell because there's a bunch of journo guys. So you had us. You had Sports Kida. You had we're well, not really journalists. But you know what I mean? Us Kida. You had Talksport. Um, Coaholic was there a bit we didn't see a lot we saw them walking about and then they disappeared um mm. metro was there because we saw steph who obviously does stuff with us as well but she was there in metro capacity stephanie is an absolute sweetheart and we got a nice little photo of we got an undisputed i didn't realize basically we did the undisputed era christmas pose i, I kept meaning to reply uh, meaning to reply that but people kept getting sick at work how, how dare they how dare they disgusting um but it was um yes. oh, sorry <laughs> Uh, it was one of years. Uh, yeah, so we, we met Steph and stuff, um, and we met uh, Alex and Gary. But there were pockets of people that and we met Steph. <laughs> so we said Steph. We met Steph and we met Steph. Uh... <laughs> oh, you did! I got what you meant there. Fuck's sake. <laughs> We met Steph, and we met another Steph. Um, uh, but there were, you could tell there were small pockets of people that were into Brit Rest because we started all the classic Mustache Mountain, um, like the like the na 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 Tyler Tyler Bay and Tra- Trent Seven proper started them all. I'm like, yeah, no, a bunch of people and Gallus were just properly play into it. The airplane spin that Tyler Bay did, where they all just kept spinning around outside. 
yeah, yeah, they sold for like sold the airplane spin for like a minute on the outside. Oh, he's brilliant. Oh, Gallus boys on top, indeed. You, know, I told Man, you, you like, would get a phone with Gallus, but you wouldn't go do it. Oh, I, <sighs> uh, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean uh, <laughs> but yeah, but then after that, they had um, what's it, Krypton Conan playing which was really really cool that was fun really yeah it was really good um and then we kind of hung out with um we saw we met alex from alex mccarthy from talk sport and sports keda um gary from sports keda like the we love the sports keda lads they are a bunch of absolute gems um yeah and that was kind of our little oh no we're telling that you do you want to tell the um the should i tell the beer story you tell the beer story. Me, be, me being the king of shitty first impressions. So, for ages, we're trying to find Steph. Steph is not the tallest person in the world. She's a, a, a tiny blonde girl. And we're, and we're walking about, and we keep thinking we see her, and we keep thinking we hear a faint, like, Irishist, Irish, Irishist, Irish accent. And I'm like, I think that's Stephanie, but I don't want to, like, walk about, hi, I'm like, before, and they're like, I don't know who you are. And I'm like, well, now I feel like a dick. Um, so then eventually i think i end up looking at my phone and stumbling across she must have literally just put a photo up that second on instagram and it was like oh no look it's literally her they're wearing the exact same outfit so we walk over so we make a i make a beeline towards it be like hey i'm matty you you've you started doing stuff for us blah 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 blah. someone literally next to us as i'm extending my hand out to, to say hi to steph bumps into my hand so I drop my bottle of beer on the floor, knocks the bottle of beer out of my hand. Um, Dan doesn't see this and turns around and just goes, oh, for fuck's sake, Matt, we can't take you anywhere. You're making a beer. I'm like, that wasn't, like, normally I would be like, yeah, no, I dropped my beer. But I'm like, that literally was not my fault. And the guy next to me is going, it wasn't his fault, but Dan is just doubling down on me being a clumsy prick. <laughs> well, <laughs> meanwhile, I've just gone to the bar and gone, one Corona, please. <laughs> yeah, smooth as you like. Joe just goes, one Corona. He goes, don't drop this one. Matt, I'm you holding it like a baby. And I'm like, Stephanie, I'm Matt. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, no, it was um, it was really really fun. And then funny, did we bump into someone that went to your uni, or was um, it? Nah. <laughs> Who was the person we bumped nah. into then? No, it's just we chat online sometimes. Oh, I thought I didn't even thought we bumped Roman. Oh, I swear you something about. Oh, they went to the same uni or whatever. But yeah, that was really weird. That you bumped into someone that you knew. That was really really odd at the BT Sport thing. Most, mostly you are, but yeah, he, he was he was really nice. Yeah, um, I, was, I thought you were going to tell the story about I'm um, bumping into someone who we're not going to see very much anymore. Who was that? A small one. Oh yes, we saw Jim, didn't we? We saw Jim oh, and you, you saw Jim. Oh Dan, no, oh, Dan saw Jim as well. Dan walked oh, really? past when when Dan went the, the first time. Dan went to the toilet when we were when we were um, when Flair first came out. He was like, "Oh, I know, I just saw Jim in a three piece suit," and he was really confused <laughs> just like, to see Jim. And I was like, "It's weird seeing like this." And, and I spoke to him about ten minutes about Takeshi's Castle um, and talked about how there was all Japan wrestlers in um, it was the like the the monsters in Takeshi's castle away yeah or like if you saw a white guy the the, the big white monster guy in Takeshi's castle was Gary Albright I think we were chatting about like, as you, like no, they used all Japan wrestlers as the um, big monsters in Takeshi's castle and there's an episode of it that I'm pretty sure Liger's on um, there, I know there's a ninja warrior there's a ninja warrior with Liger and Okada on I know that uh, but yeah, we end up chatting about that, and then uh, I thought uh, um, the story that I want to tell is um, when Jim remembered that we were part of TWM Wrestling, which is lovely. It's very, very which nice. Is, which is lovely, and he asked how many of us were here, and he and you said, "Oh, right." I'm gonna let me tell this story. Cause I'm gonna tell the story because I feel like you're gonna lead with one bit, and it's gonna sound worse than it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> So I was joking, I just said to him, oh yeah, no, me, Dan and Joe are here. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because we, we've emailed back and forth with Adam and, and, and John and Bri- uh, not Briley and, and Jim. Um, and, and Glenn knows us just from chatting to him at different shows and stuff. And then, um, so I'm like, oh yeah, um, as I used for like, oh yeah, no, we joke that me, Joe and Dan are like the Jim, John and Glenn of, of our website. And he's like, who's who? And I'm like, well, I'm clearly Jim. <laughs> so, 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 um, I- 
Are you sure about that? <laughs> um, and then I went, and I, and I went. Well, we said Bri- we said Dan Briley because he's very stoic, but has a tendency to kill. And he was like, fair enough. And then I went, and then that makes Joe Glenn because, and then <laughs> Jim makes a joke of, oh, so he's never here and he's got a horrific drug problem. <laughs> and he was like, I'm jo-. clearly Jim is joking. He's fucking around. And then I've just turned around and gone, no, Joe's a drinking problem. Completely different. <laughs> and then that second, Glenn walks past, and we both just start laughing. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, Glenn. He's like, hey, Matt. And I was like, just really, really strange. Strange how things work out. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm offended that you implied that I'm never here. I am your <laughs> alcohol. I am your alcohol soaked safety net, and I catch everything because I'm always here. In fact, I can't wait for the day that the thing that I need to catch is on fire so that everything goes to shit. But the, I never said that. Jim said that. I just said no your I said no your drink not drugs. There was a that different point, my friend. <laughs> I never said you weren't here. So always here. I said look, you're more the, the the way you're Glenn is because you are the um, overly flamboyant one that likes to use dramatic prose and yeah, that's pretty much it. And if we were to have a, <laughs> and if we were to have a commentary team, you'd probably be the the, the guy to do it. So, oh, thanks, Matthew. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't know any moves. Everyone is getting planted. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 neither does Michael Cole. So you're fine. Just say Blue Thunderbomb thirty six times. Um, right. Anyway, um, conventional Blue Thunderbomb. <laughs> Uh, big big thank you to BT Sport they were absolute legends and we are very very excited to kind of be on nodding terms with them at the moment hopefully we're doing a lot more stuff with them in the future um, BT Sport the home of uh, WWE in the UK getting Raw Smackdown NXT and NXT UK to so go and subscribe to BT Sport now on whatever platform you have to watch your television or your internet you can also get a BT Sport monthly pass um, and it's also available on the BT Sport app there's the admin out of the way um, we, we just yeah uh, if you want to get in touch with us at TWM Wrestle um, we've got loads of stuff going on over the next few days we've had a pretty mad week if we're brutally honest um, and it's in no sign of letting up because we've got a progress preview coming out on TWM News the newly revamped TWM.News totally planned to have a complete rejig of the website didn't accidentally press a button and reset the whole thing at half three today <laughs> Therefore, just going, you know what? I'm going to have a little fiddle around with the website and see what I can make it look like and then accidentally make it look really nice. So, yeah, I'm professional. Um, and then... Um this coming up this Monday we've got a preview of NWA Hard Times where Shirley is sitting down with Pat Daddy. Um, it's... Because this is the thing. I'm, we'll say it. TWM member... I'm confident affiliate affiliate TWM affiliate Stu Bennett um, we announced it today and I was very uneasy with Kayla using the word he has joined TWM because I feel like there's some sort of contract thing there that could get us in a lot of trouble <laughs> but he's going to be um, kind of exclusively previewing NWO pay views with Shirley um, starting off um, with Hard Times this Monday which hold is on awesome one second why is Betty White trending on Twitter oh it's her birthday don't panic Fuck for that! Um, someone put it on Twitter, and so they they started crying, and then they stopped, checked their phone, and she's ninety eight years old today. So we're fine. I hope we're fine. Click click it just in case, because I can't go on to the next bit without knowing that Betty White is fine. Dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. Joe, you have to. Happy 98th birthday, Betty White. Right. Things to know about our Golden Girl. Right, we're fine. We're fine. Betty White's still alive. Um, and also out today because this is a, this is a thing we are running a, basically what we've done is we've done that thing of we've put on a TV show directly against the Super Bowl because this is not getting listened to right away because we all know that everyone has already downloaded our um it, our, our special interview that um came out today where Shirley sat down with Charlotte Flair. Um, Woo! Yeah, the eleven-time women's champion uh, sat down Woo! with her longtime friend, which we only realised literally a few days ago when it got when they when it got all got confirmed. Um, big up to Kelly for confirmed, sort of hooking this up and letting Shelley talk to a friend that she's known for over five years. They've been friends for time. Her and Flair. Woo! 
Um, so go and download it and stream that. And then once you've done that, you can listen to this and listen to us at the BT Sport play. This this was all thanks to BT Sport. They're they are absolute legends, and we. Um, look forward to their glorious new regime I for one welcome our new wrestling overlords uh, Joe social media at WrestleSplania yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting one I don't know why you bring that up um, at my ID if you want to see occasional tweets I can't be bothered with Twitter anymore I keep putting things on Twitter then for some reason I'm immediately regretting them 15 minutes later don't know why um, you can get us on at TWM Wrestle uh, this has been <laughs> Is this the driving thing again? I couldn't do that. Annoyingly, I'm so pissed. I couldn't. There was a plan to do a skit based off the fact that we, obviously, Stu Bennett's got involved. Um, on top of that, um, Lucy Openshaw, um, like one of Brit Ress's like, bright young things, has, has, has made the jump brother do Jack, is going to be helping out at TWM Wrestling. Um, so, yeah, and I was meant to do a, a Harry Redknapp style interview, but then Dickhead here deleted everything off the website. So I had to go and run home and quickly get all that put together. We might do another one later in the week we'll um we'll see what we can do uh and if we sign anyone else <laughs> i'm looking at nico cranshaw on a on a six-month deal we're gonna see i need i need someone who's nippy nippy on the wing um terrific terrific terrific, terrific player uh anyway uh this has been best of the rest a bit of a different best of the rest i would say who's on smack tool tomorrow tomorrow but i generally don't know at this point i think it's me maybe reese maybe joe i don't know it's you'll find out tomorrow to be honest it's not me oh so it's me and someone you'll find out tomorrow anyway it's been real thanks for listening we'll speak to you guys soon bye